ever wonder what are the odds an implant would fail? They are 10% on average, 5% if you have a really good implant. So the odds of success are good, but if we consider that every year millions of people around the world require an implant of some kind, even a 5% failure rate becomes non-trivial. Last year, for example, about 9,000 people in Australia alone were forced back on the operating table to replace faulty hip and knee implants. That's about one surgery every 60 minutes. Now, the obvious question is, why is it that implants are not 100% biocompatible? Well, it turns out we don't have the full picture of how they work. We don't have a comprehensive understanding at the molecular level of how implant surfaces interact with biomolecules like proteins and peptides. You see, once an implant is in the body, it is immediately covered with proteins and peptides that are in the blood and other bodily fluids. How and which of these peptides adsorb to the implant ultimately determines if the body will accept or reject the implant. Now, to improve the odds of successful implant integration, experimentalists have been trying to understand the interface between biomolecules and implant surfaces, but they are facing a lot of challenges, and this is where our work comes in. The main challenge for experimentalists is that they cannot easily determine the structure of a biomolecule once it adsorbs onto a material surface. And that's the key to an implant biological response. So we use instead advanced molecular modeling and simulation techniques to predict these structures so we can then connect them to their interfacial properties. Because of the huge computational expense, however, these simulations are performed on supercomputers. So this is definitely not a job for your laptop or mine. In partnership with our experimental collaborators, our simulations have revealed a deeper molecular level understanding of how biomolecules interact with the titania surface and how we can manipulate these interactions under different conditions, such as different pH or acidity, the presence of ions such as sodium and calcium, and so forth. Building on these fundamental insights, our next job will be to identify factors that connect these interactions to interfacial properties and propose ways to manipulate these properties at the molecular level. Now, this will bring us closer to the perfectly biocompatible implant and not only reduce the number of avoidable costly surgeries, but will also make possible many other critical applications that are currently unattainable due to the far from complete understanding of biomaterial interactions. Thank you.